This virus is wreaking havoc on every facet of our daily lives. It is yet another example of how very interconnected we are in this world. Currently, our national economy of Belize is shut down. Our citizens are for the most part still locked down. In these trying times, the people look to us, their leaders, for solutions. They look to us for a sense of purpose and dedication. Our first priority, therefore, must always be the health and well-being of the Belizean people, all the Belizean people. In this regard, our actions and decisions must be guided and driven by the consensus advice of our medical and health professionals. At the same time, we have a duty and an obligation to protect and preserve as best as possible the economic infrastructure and interests of our nation and people. Belize today is under a state of emergency which comes to an end on the 30th of June. Our public health authorities, health professionals with specialization in public health, epidemiology, clinical care, and hus hospital management believe that keeping people home, at home for at least another 30 days represents our best means of further containing the spread of the coronavirus. At present, Belize has 18 confirmed cases of the coronavirus with two fatalities. At the present time, we have done a little over 1,000 tests from a population of 400,000 people, more or less. There is a terrible shortage of testing kits and PPEs. We call on the government to make full and good use of this time to do the following. One, significantly increase testing for COVID-19 in every district across the country, in the cities, towns, and villages. We should hire hundreds of people, give them a short training course, and set them out into our towns, villages, and communities to hunt down the virus, identify suspects, test widely, isolate, and if necessary, treat the positive cases. Two, draft and enact an appropriate, relevant, and comprehensive COVID-19 Act, which will provide the legal framework and basis for our public health, national security, and economic sectors to manage our response to this crisis. Three, develop a clear and comprehensive food security plan. Our people must be fed, our farmers must survive, and food security is a must for our nation. And four, the legal and constitutional of our citizens, constitutional rights of our citizens must remain paramount, particularly at a time of a declared state of emergency. Malaysian people have been patient and understanding in their willingness to accept certain limitations on their constitutional rights to move, associate and work. But these limitations must not be extended one day or even one hour beyond what is absolutely necessary. Even in a state of emergency, the rule of law must apply and prevail. We remind those in authority, particularly our security forces, that our people must at all times be treated with dignity, respect, and fairness. This is no time for partisan politics. We as leaders have a moral obligation to work together. As a country, we can't afford to have the economy on lockdown indefinitely. We have to come up with a bold economic plan. And just, just as important, how we can find ways to provide affordably 
credit to the thousands of Belizean small business. This is no time for complacency. No time to let down our God. And no time to let God down our precautions. We have done a fairly good job so far as a nation and as a people. And we must commend our frontline workers, our nurses and doctors, all health professionals and workers, our security forces, and all the Belizean people who have shown patience and resilience and togetherness. And with the guidance of the Creator and with hard work, Belize will prevail.